It's time to build another game. Hold on a second. There we go. It's time to build another gaming PC. And we've got a lot of unique components here that I'm excited to show you. We've got Corsair sending out quite a bit. Asus hooked us up with a uh, B550i Gaming. This is an ITX gaming PC build. It's gonna be pretty powerful using an iGame RTX 3070. And the perhaps most important aspect of this particular build is this unique case from iBuyPower in their height gaming brand. So this case is called the Revolt 3 and this particular model ships in a Pelican case. It's a special edition and you can actually fly with this. Apparently it fits in the overhead bins of, of most airlines. So uh, it's the perfect size for that. It's just gonna be super heavy if you decide to actually bring a full-fledged gaming PC with you. Um, probably wanna stick to laptops, but nonetheless, it's actually a pretty cool, unique feature. If you do wanna lug it around, there's that option. So in this video, we'll be building in the Revolt 3 using the components I just showed you, and we'll be talking about some of the pros and cons of this case as we go along. I don't expect this to be a full-fledged case review. I'm not going to market it as such, but uh, it will hopefully give you a bit of insight into what to expect with this case. We'll talk about pricing toward the end as well. All right, stay with me. Be sure to check out Team Group T-Force Extreme ARGB modules for your next PC build. They look fan frickin' tastic and boast excellent frequencies and timings. My favorite is this white kit, which when lit, oh my gosh. And while you're at it, consider joining Team Group's back to school giveaway where you'll have a chance to win RAM, internal, and external SSDs. Click the links below for more details. So running through parts very quickly here, we of course have the Ryzen 7 5800X, a tried and true eight core 16 thread Zen 3 CPU. We're pairing that with an ROG Strix B550i gaming ITX motherboard. Remember, we're going with Corsair's Vengeance LPX 16 gig kit in white 3200 megahertz. It's a well-rounded kit overall. We're gonna have this link below along with the other components, by the way. For storage, we've got an MP600 Pro reads and writes up to 7,000 megabytes per second and 5,500 megabytes per second, respectively. One terabyte capacity, this thing is ultra fast. For graphics, like I said, we're going with the iGame RTX 3070. It has a beautiful white shroud, should fit nicely with our white case and white memory. And for cooling, we've got Corsair's IQH100i Elite Capellux. This is in white. And if you're wondering, yes, the case does support a 240 millimeter AIO. Actually up to 280 mil, but I wanted to have a bit of extra breathing room just in case we ran into any hiccups along the way because I've, I've never actually seen this case in person. So the 240 mil should give us a bit of breathing room and still provide plenty of cooling for our 5800X. Now this is the Revolt 3. And yes, it has an integrated handle up top, which makes it super portable. I really like that aspect of it. This is shaped, let's be honest, a lot like NZXT's H1. I think it's called the H1. We've done a few videos on it. This also kind of looks like the Meshalicious. It has mesh panels pretty much everywhere. You've got a mesh panel up front, on the left side, on the right side, at the rear, and on top. So ventilation pretty much everywhere. I expect thermals to be uh, decent, maybe not the best, but uh, still pretty good for an ITX case of this size. Now, another nice feature of the Revolt 3, the fact that you can remove each of these panels really easily. And uh, look, they're sturdy enough. You got these little retention clips. You got four of them per panel uh, that hold these in place um, and to, to the point where I don't think they're gonna just come randomly flying off if you're slinging it around with the integrated handle. But you can see it, it's, fairly easy to remove these. So if you ever need to access anything, no screws required, that is super convenient. Now this version of the case also includes an integrated power supply. This is a 700 watt SFXL unit. You could fit SFX, which is just gonna be a bit shorter than the SFXL dimensions. You'll have a bit more space in that case. But uh, if you are particular about the kinds of units you like to use, I recommend just buying this case without the included power supply. You're gonna save about a hundred bucks, which means it's kind of a wash because most SFX units cost around hundred bucks that are in this wattage uh, classification here. But I I do like that iBuyPower included the option to buy a case without the included power supply. So with some of the basics out of the way, let's get the platform assembled. And for that, we're gonna need the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, and our NVMe. So this here is the ROG Strix B550i gaming motherboard. Something I did not expect this to have. I just realized it. You can see there's a bit of perforation here over the rear IO cover, and it's actually got a fan in there. It's a small little fan, and you can see that the VRM cooling, there's just a little plate here, and most of the fin stack is under this shroud. Out. So you actually have active VRM cooling in a B550 ITX motherboard. That is pretty freaking cool. It also supports 5000 series desktop processors out of the box, which means you don't need to update your BIOS prior to installing a Zen 3 CPU. That's always nice. So let's lift up the socket lever. Gently insert the CPU into the socket. There we go. And lower the retention arm back into position. Next up, we'll tackle RAM. So that's two DIMMs for two slots. We'll just get the first module in here. I actually like the white contrasting the black in this board. When we pair this with the H100i that's also in white, I think we're gonna have a really nice black and white theme going. Next up, we'll tackle our MP600 Pro to install that. We'll need to remove this heat shield here. Easy does it. 
There we go. And I'm actually gonna leave the motherboard stock a heat shield for the M.2 uh, removed because the Corsair MP600 Pro's heat sink already looks much more functional. Uh, it's got many different uh, little heat fins here to increase surface area so that the drive doesn't get too hot while under load. So uh, although this does look quite pretty, I think that this here is a little more functional. Now to prep this case for motherboard installation, we need to remove this radiator bracket. It's actually nice that you can remove this. It makes installing these larger coolers uh, much easier. So we're gonna get this off and then we should have a straight shot down uh, to the motherboard tray. Now, another cool thing about this case, oh, that's cool, it's like a it's like a door. Wow, so it can just sit upright like that. Uh, another cool thing about this case is that you don't need a riser cable to connect your graphics card, your discrete GPU to your motherboard. So let's get this rear IO shield in here. It shouldn't take too long. If I can, if I can get it. There we go. And as we bring the motherboard in, we'll want to mine these PSU cables. They are rather stiff, so you're going to have to be uh, yeah, a bit forceful with where you want to move those. Just tighten things down. Now at this point, we should take care of wiring as much of it as we can at least. We're not going to have the graphics card installed at this point, but everything else, the 24 pin, the 8 pin EPS, and front I.O. Uh, should be taken care of now because once we get the A.I.O. in here and the graphics card, we're not going to have much wiggle room to play with. A few moments later. Phew. Okay. Um, that took a bit longer than I expected. It's a bit more difficult than I expected given how much room we have to play with. There's only one cutout here where all of your front I.O. cables have to run. So we've got our front panel here. Also the power cable. This is the extension for the power supply. So you're going to connect your PC to power from below, even though the power supply is up here. Uh, and then we also have our USB 3.0 cable running. Uh, just basically right on top of our motherboard, which is driving my OCD insane, but what can you do? We've also got our HD audio cable poking through here as well. So not the cleanest. I mean, it's not like you're going to be seeing anything in here anyway, but having a rubber grommet or something, or maybe like a cutout to run behind the motherboard, because it does look like there's a bit of space there, would have been best. So we've got most of the wiring taken care of. Now we're going to install the AIO, and that's going to involve its own set of wiring. And then once that's finished, we'll get the graphics card installed, and then we should be ready to power on. I'll tell you what, having this radiator bracket hinged is is super convenient so it stays connected to the chassis uh, and you don't necessarily need to like pick it up and put it in a position. All you need to do once you connect the block is just swing this back over and it should hold in place. Now, if you notice from this side, I have the fan set to intake. There are a few reasons why I've done this. I've also rotated the power supply backwards so that the fan is actually facing toward the center of the case and not on the outside where it would normally be ventilated. So I actually want this case to lay flat long ways because it's going to go in the entertainment setup uh, under our TV in the living room. Uh, it's not really going to fit standing upright. It would look a bit awkward. Uh, so that's the first reason why the power supply to be flipped around. Second reason that we have the uh, the fans like this is because I don't want the fan blades to be snagged by any cables or even the AIO tubes themselves uh, if they were on the other side of the radiator because it's going to be pretty tight in there once we close this uh, this little door. And third, the radiator fans are actually going to inadvertently supply extra air to the power supply since it's been rotated this way. So air is going to move in through one side, it's going to enter the power supply. Granted, it'll be a bit warmed up, but these units don't run very hot anyway, even under load. And then it's going to exhaust air out the rear. So we're getting rid of any possibility of uh, choking the unit uh, had the power supply been switched yeah, backwards. I'm also really glad this case has multiple zip tie points because it would be a disaster. If not, there'd be cables flying everywhere. Let's see if I can get this one hooked up here. Looks to be pretty clean. There we go. Not too bad. And now that everything's situated, including the block, which you can see there, we've had to kind of wrap the, the tubes around in a bit of a circle to get rid of that extra length we don't need. We can just squeeze this right down. You can see it does get a bit tight in there, but nothing too compromising. And again, if you wrap those tubes around themselves just a, a couple of times, uh, you can get rid of that extra length and you shouldn't have any clearance issues with it. at least a standard thickness uh, radiator here like this Corsair one. I think up to 30 millimeters, you should be okay, but anything beyond that, like 45 or, or plus with fans attached, it's not gonna work. Last thing to do then is install the graphics card and I by Power actually makes that fairly easy to do. Now uh, you can see we've got this entire component Apartment here off to one side uh, where the card will slot again directly into the motherboard so no riser cable needed. Don't have to worry about Gen 3, Gen 4 fluff and this and that. Uh, or, or even the QC issues associated with riser cables, which we've talked about in a dedicated video. We've even tested many of those. Uh, this will allow us to slot the card directly into the motherboard and it will have its own dedicated ventilation here off to one side of the chassis. Ooh, 
Ooh, mama. You know, we've built with this graphics card once before, but I think in this case, it's really gonna complement the chassis. The installation should be as simple as removing these two screws, slotting in the card, which I actually think will be easier to do here from the front. If I can get it to move past these wires here. We've gotta still connect PCIe power, so that's why I am a bit hesitant about fitment out of the gate. But I think we, I think we just got it, <laughs> okay. Oh, wow, this is such a tight fit. Oh my gosh. And we'll connect PCIe power. And the Revolt 3 does include a little bracket here that uh, kind of compresses the PCIe cables uh, so that they're not snagged uh, by the side panel when it is installed and removed repeatedly. So let's get this in here. That is actually a very, very clean look. looking mighty fine if I do say so myself. This is uh, one of my cleaner ITX builds to date and a lot of this comes down to the case. Yes, it was a bit difficult. There are a few things I would change and I'll run through that in a second. But overall, I mean, you could put this in your living room and it would just look like another piece of furniture. I really like the minimalist design of the Revolt 3. Not necessarily a fan of the RGB here. I'll be sure to change that. Not sure what my uh, neighbors, family and friends seeing rainbow puke in our living room. Now with respect to issues I ran into, there were definitely a few of those, the most obvious of which was the front IO cable managing issue. That was something that I really couldn't get around. They do have again that large cutout atop the uh, the motherboard tray, but I feel like they could have done a better job with this routing. I mean, th there's a lot of empty space, especially behind this motherboard tray. I mean, we're talking half an inch of clearance. That is plenty for front IO cables. I mean, even US, like, you know, the fat USB 3 cable, uh, USB type C cable, those could fit back here. The problem is there's no cutout giving you access to this area. And you could certainly use a cutout for the SSDs if you had any of those, the two and a half inch drives uh, to you know route those cables back in front of the board to connect them to the, to the board itself. Um, th there's no option for any of that. The, the, all the front IO cabling, which is basically down here in the, the basement, if you wanna call it that, has to be routed through that one large cutout just above the motherboard. And it makes for a, a bit of a messy cable managing scenario. You have a lot of cables running in front of the motherboard, getting tangled up with the AIO. So I did my best to keep most of that out of the way because um, well, it's not pretty. I know you can't see in here as it is, but um, just peace of mind. My OCD, it bothers me when cables aren't where they should be. Another issue I ran into was power supply cabling. I know this isn't technically a part of the case, but you do have an option to buy the case plus the PSU. So I'm going to say it because um, it's a, just another reason why I think you should avoid the PSU bundle. The cabling for especially the 8-pin EPS barely reached the motherboard. In fact, if I hadn't flipped the power supply around, it's possible that I couldn't have routed the 8-pin EPS the way that I had in this build. It, it just wasn't long enough the other way and probably would have had to have just stretched straight across the motherboard, potentially blocking part of the uh, the lit up CPU block for the AIO. It just would have looked very messy. And, and since, I mean, we're talking about the same manufacturer here, right? you'd think they'd have that figured out by now, especially when we're hitting production at this point. Um, so that's a bit disappointing. Another reason why I'd suggest you just buy your own power supply. Um, you, you not only get to kind of pick and choose the warranty, the wattage and all of that, uh, but you're probably not gonna have to worry about the same kinds of cable link constraints that you will with this uh, iBuy power unit. Now there is one more negative about this case, and I know it seems like I'm just like harping on it big time, but that's only because everything else about it, I actually rather like. But there's one other, one other issue, it casts a grim shadow over pretty much the entire building experience, and that's the price. I was really hoping this would come in at, at the most 100 US dollars. The sweet spot for this, in my opinion, between 80 and 90 bucks. If you can get this for around 90 bucks, without the power supply, of course, that's a steal. That, that, that's, I mean, that, this is a worthy contender in the ITX space. But at 120, 130 dollars, it's just kind of, Meh, it doesn't really stand out. And then on top of that, if you want the power supply included, you're spending an extra 120 bucks just to have that in there. And and that, in my opinion, again, it's just another reason why you don't wanna buy uh, the bundled unit. Just get the case if you're okay with 120 bucks or so, 
and um, yeah, roll with that. You can pick and choose pretty much everything you want in there. Just make sure again that the power supply is SFX or SFXL. Standard size power supplies will not fit in here. But apart from that, look, the Revolt 3 all in all is a good start. The price they can work out over time, I expect. The, the few kinks with cable management, I mean, you've got to expect a few of those compromises in a compact tower. Now this isn't a super, super compact ITX case, but then again, we're also able to fit a 240 mil AIO in here, a full size graphics card, a triple slot card if you wanted, uh, and, and you can put beefy SFX power supplies in here. So it's not like you're compromising much in the way of hardware support. And that's why we're, we're you know, the result is this kind of form factor here. It's just slightly larger than again, an NZXT H1. But for the price, I mean, I really wish it could stand out a bit more in the price department. It's just a, a competitor at this point. And ultimately what it's gonna come down to is hardware support and aesthetics. If you like the way this looks and you're okay with the price, you're probably gonna end up buying it because there's not much else out here that looks like this. The Meshalicious is another one you're probably considering. It's also a really great case. I haven't built with it, but I've seen plenty of reviews, plenty of builds in that case. It's another one I wanna get my hands on, uh, but for now, I'd give this case a solid seven and a half, eight out of 10. I'll leave it at that. If you guys wanna leave feedback in the comment section below, that would be appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. You can find again, all the parts we use to build this system in the video description. So check those out and they would support us through those links too. Uh, that is also appreciated. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already, can't forget that. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for building with me.